Right, I don't know how well this is going to come out. I've got the camera on the tripod, so when I try to demonstrate this, it'll be held perfectly still rather than in my shaky hand. But just to sort of show the setup, I've got the BSA A65 that I finally got a test ride on yesterday back on the bike lift because um, although the engine ran well, um, the 45 miles or so that I did all in on it yesterday showed up a few other little points that need looking at and uh, also gave me some doubts as to whether there might be any oil in the forks or not. There also was a bit of a clattery sort of noise when we went over bumps yesterday which I put down to being the forks but actually it's this brake plate rattling about because it's not done up tightly by the nut securing it on the wheel spindle so I may even have to take the wheel off in order to access that and tighten that up but we don't want this up in and clattering around like that particularly so I'll have to deal with that um, and the other thing is there seems to be a little bit of play in the steering head bearings and um, I've got the front wheel raised there it's, it's not clamped by the bike lift we've got the machine on its centre stand with a jack underneath the sump plate of the engine uh, to sort of raise the front wheel off the deck um, I felt a bit of play in the steering head bearings and maybe I don't know whether this will work or not but perhaps we'll be able to see on video that there is a little play perhaps by looking at the um, front mudguard here relative to the frame or possibly even maybe we might be able to pick up some movement there I don't know but I'll, I'll give it a try but uh, I do think that some adjustment is required let's give it a go right I'm clunking the forks backwards and forwards there I can see the mudguard getting further away from and closer to the frame a little I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of play there and it'll be easy to adjust but uh, with any luck we might have picked that up on film to uh, demonstrate that it's there but my next job is going to be to um, adjust the steering head bearings to take that play out and then uh, I suppose I'll have to get the front wheel off in order to deal with that uh, nut that holds the brake plate onto the front wheel properly so uh, we'll have to get on with that as well so that's uh, they're the next things to do. I also mentioned that the uh, gearing on this feels rather low. Um, looking at those bolts in the rear sprocket, I would say that the proximity of the chain to them would suggest that uh, the rear sprocket is certainly not bigger than it should be. So if any changes were needed or required by the owner, that would mean going in there and taking the clutch and the alternator and everything off in order to um, access the gearbox sprocket and change that. So maybe for now, depending on what uh, he wants to do of course, perhaps he want to leave it alone and uh, get a few miles on it and see uh, how he gets on with the bike first perhaps. But I'll do the necessary at the front end and because uh, that really does need sorting out what I've demonstrated there and then that might be us done with this one subject to uh, what the owner wants to do we'll talk about it never ends don't worry the engine's still okay as far as I'm aware I haven't run it today I've tightened up the steering head bearings to sort of stop the front end shaking around as it was I've yet to uh, address that issue with the brake plate brake plate on the front wheel and check if there's oil in the forks but while I was working on the steering head bearings and adjusting them I found out that the steering damper assembly wasn't bolted on properly and was flopping and rattling around so um, I'm just dealing with that if it's not one thing it's another but all these little things crop up and um, these are the ones 
unfortunately sometimes can take up a lot more time than it might seem that they're worth or that they should take but uh, they're all very important and this is the bite incidentally that when uh, when I first started trying it out and I only did a few very short trips on it because the vibration was so bad that the uh, head steady wasn't bolted up properly will it uh, I obviously sorted that out and uh, that didn't do it any favours either. It's not bolted on at the moment because I have to remove the bolt from it to access the bolt that should be tight that holds the bottom of the steering damper assembly on. So, uh, And obviously the tank had to come off for access so that's why we're looking at it with no fuel tank on right now but um, it'll be another little job well worth doing. Right, well here we are again with this BSA A65 and I've um, taken up the slack in the steering head bearings, that's sorted now, and I've also fitted the steering damper, bolted it up tightly. That was left loose because um, when the nut and bolt that clamp it to the frame were done up tightly, it sort of pulled off centre against the steering head and made the steering bind, so they left that loose to sort of allow the steering to move freely. But what I did is I put washers in between the lug on the frame and the ear of the damper unit to sort of position it where it wanted to be so it can now be bolted up tightly the steering can swing about okay and this isn't jangling and rattling about so that was all pretty well worth doing all that stuff um, as can be seen I got the front wheel off because I was going to address something which we'll go down here and take a look at I've got the front wheel set up here and basically the front brake plate was rattling and clattering around as I demonstrated because it hadn't been tightened up properly. Um, there was a reason for that and also this nut that holds the brake plate screws up and on the uh, thread on the spindle and holds the brake plate firmly was actually fitted the wrong way up. It's actually got a little, I don't know whether the camera will pick it up but there's almost like a sort of integral washer almost and that was facing away from the brake plate brake plate well that's meant to face down towards the brake plate but um, I turned that over tightened it up and the brake plate just sort of stuck to the wheel and went round with it so that was obviously why they hadn't tightened this nut up to allow the uh, brake plate to float against the wheel well the reason for that was that this bearing retaining ring was almost falling out. God knows how many turns I put into that to screw it up and get it tightly. And now finally the brake plate can be fitted and go all the way down with its shoulder registering against the inner race of the uh, wheel bearing and move freely. So it just uh, remains for me to fit this nut, tighten it, put the front wheel back on the bike and all that's done and then the only thing left to consider is the fork oil situation but um, already by the time I get this front wheel on the situation will be vastly improved no doubt here we are you see and I can probably nip this up with a Tommy bar and that will be tight rather than rattling about and uh, ready to do what it's meant to do properly. Although having said that, the front brake was very strong, I'll give it that, you know, the, I had no qualms about how good the front brake was, but uh, the rattling at the front end was a little bit off-putting and uh, it was this clattering about, so uh, that won't be doing that anymore. <laughs> 